Meanwhile, the four Eastern, or Orthodox patriarchs, continued to carry on. In 1517, a little-known German monk named Martin Luther, protesting certain Roman Catholic practices, nailed a 95-point thesis to the door of the Roman Church in Wittenberg. His critique started what is now known as the Protestant Reformation. Fueled by complex political, social, and economic factors, in addition to religious problems, the Reformation spread like a raging fire into virtually every nook and cranny of the Roman Catholic Church. As decade followed decade, many branches of Protestantism took various forms. Different divisions insisted they were neither Protestant nor Catholic, most wanting a less centralized form of leadership. Anyone could start their own church, which led to today's 2,600 different Protestant denominations. While many profess to being Christians, they reject the biblical data which speak of the historic church, throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Some pretended to be the New Testament church, but were seriously off base, leading many people far astray from Christ and the church. But that first church of the apostles, despite persecution, political oppression, and desertion, miraculously carried on. Today, the four patriarchates remain intact, in full communion, maintaining the original apostolic faith of the New Testament record. The holiest two Christian shrines, the Nativity, where Jesus was born, and the Sepulchre, where Jesus was buried and resurrected, are still protected to this day by the Orthodox Church. As the 165th direct successor to the Apostle Peter, the Patriarch of Antioch, Ignatius IV, presides on a street called Strait, as is mentioned in the Bible. Patriarch Ignatius IV took his name after the great martyr Ignatius I, who was the third to preside on the throne of Antioch from 67 to 107 AD. Records of Orthodox tradition hold that Ignatius of Antioch was the young child Christ took up into his arms in Matthew 18.3. We did not invent orthodoxy. Churches cannot be invented. Uh, and, and nobody can make a church. And Christ is the only one who spoke about his own church. And we believe that we stick to orthodoxy because it is his own church. Today, the Patriarchate of Antioch, together with the three other ancient Eastern Patriarchates, Constantinople, Alexandria, and Jerusalem, added five modern Patriarchates, Russia, Serbia, Romania, Bulgaria, and Georgia, four autocephalous churches, Cyprus, Greece, Poland, and Albania, and five autonomous churches, Sinai, Czech Republic, Finland, Japan, and China. Many with dependent bodies throughout the world, together they comprise what is known as the Eastern Orthodox Church, with an estimated 250 million adherents, of whom some five to six million live in the United States and Canada. According to Mr. Daly Smith of Southern Baptist Ministries, people are leaving church feeling empty on Sundays. They are not being lifted spiritually. Similar reports come from Europe and South America, where church members are simply dropping out. My parents raised me Baptist, and it wasn't ever really doing it for me. Uh, they used to make me go to church every Sunday, and now I just kind of don't believe in anything. I uh, take what I want to out of the Bible and out of the Word, and I pray on my own, and I just don't really feel that I need one man, a pastor, or a priest to... To, to give me that word. I think it's my relationship with God and my relationship with Christ and you know no man I feel has one word to say about it. We don't go to church on Sunday to listen to a lecture or a sermon. We go to church to be sanctified, to experience this holiness which is in the divine liturgy. And uh, if you go to church and uh, don't experience uh, the sense of the holy uh, then you leave the church without uh, 
without what uh, the American uh, uh, psychologist William James said, uh, without a, a spiritual experience. And we go to church to have a spiritual experience and be in communion, uh, not only with God, but with each other. Orthodox service is a celebration. A few have discovered the original church and are converting to orthodoxy. In 1987, about 20 parishes of former evangelicals embraced the Orthodox faith. I uh, chrismated them and uh, ordained them, uh, and they are an integral and very important part of the uh, Archdiocese today. The thing that <clears throat> brought us to uh, at least look at the church was after almost a decade of campus outreach and evangelism in the 60s, we became convinced that biblically we had to be tied into the church to do what we were doing. Uh, we did not set out to discover orthodoxy. We set out to find out what the ancient church was really like. And in doing so, we discovered orthodoxy. All oh, you orthodox Christians, may the Lord God remember in his heavenly kingdom, always, now, and ever, and unto the ages of age. From the beginning, the breaking of the bread and wine was kept at the very center of Christian worship. The uniqueness of orthodoxy and how it differs from uh, Protestantism is this, that we do not, through the divine liturgy, we do not tell people uh, what Christ said only. Through the sacrament, which we call communion or the Eucharist, Eucharistia, uh, we tell people what Christ indeed did. Just as the law, the Psalms and the prophets were read in the synagogue worship in early Israel.